progress, getting close to the end. This video is going to be talking about the test bench for the spy master with chip select functionality added in. It's very similar to the other test bench for the spy master, so this should be a pretty quick one. Um, so let's let's jump into this. Uh, here's the test bench right in front of us here. It's simple uh, entity architecture, some constants that define what we want to test. Again, you know, if you want to change it for your applications, I recommend you do, and just make sure that your timing is correct for whatever chip you're trying to interface to. Clocks per half bit, max bytes per chip select, CS and active clocks, sounds good. We're doing two bytes per chip select, so we're gonna do a double byte transaction for this test bench. Uh, some signals. This is the same procedure as last time for sending a single byte out on the master and a clock generator for our test bench clock our unit under test now which is the spy master with single chip select very good that's that and then our test code which is not a lot so we have reset being driven and we're just going to send out two bytes so i think i let's see master tx count i think i hard code this yeah i okay. hard code master tx count to one zero which is two so every time this is going to be expecting a two byte transfer on the spy master with single chip select if you wanted to stress this test bench more you could change this this master tx count between bursts between multi-byte transactions and that should work just fine but this one's just hard coded to two because every time i want to send something it's always going to be a two byte transfer for this use case um, for what I'm using it for. So send single byte C1, send single byte C2. That's it. That's the whole thing. We're gonna and we just want to make sure we receive C1 and C2. We're doing loop back again, so spy mosey is wrapped uh, so mosey is the output, which is wrapped back in on the MISO line, so whatever we send out should be what we receive back. Let's go to the EDA playground and run the simulation, check that it's working the way we would expect. So this one is located at edaplayground.com forward slash X forward slash B H capital V. B lowercase B lowercase H capital V. And this is very similar to the previous one. Here's the test bench code on the left that we just talked through. Looks good. On the right, uh, there's two files now. So there's the SPI master, which is in the, the low level master. That's this guy. And then there's this, this design.vhd, which is the higher level um, SPI master with chip select functionality at an end that we just described in the previous video. So that should look very familiar. And if you click run, do, do, do it thinks, launches the EP waveform viewer. And I thought I had signals added, but I will add them. Uh, so let's look at the unit under test. Uh, all of these. There we go. Very good. Um, is there anything else? Yeah, that's probably pretty good. We can look at the SPI master if we want to. I'll add them in. There we go. We got a lot of signals to look at. So this is the SPI master down here. All these guys. Um, and this, these top ones are just the SPI master with chip select. So we'll pay more attention to this. The reset starts low. It goes high. So we're ready to do stuff. And we notice that as soon as we start sending out C1, so here's C1 going out, here's C2 going out, that looks fine. But we also have a chip select now. Huzzah! So here's chip select going right here. Here's chip select going low, and it's low now for two bytes all on its own, and it goes back high again at the end of the transaction. So, handy way to send arbitrary length multi-byte transactions with uh, just one instantiation of a module. So this looks like it's working. Here's the SPI clock, and here's the MOSI data, and MISO is wrapped back in, so it should look the same. So good, this looks like it's working. If we go back to the EDA playground and just look at the log output here, we do see, in fact, that we sent out C1, received C1, we sent out C2 and received C2, and tests were complete. So the test bench looks good. The spy master with chip select functionality looks good. And we're going to be tying this all together and creating a cool demo. So stay tuned for that. 
Hey y'all, just wanted to jump in at the end of this video real quick to say, please check out patreon.com forward slash Nandland and consider supporting me there. I would really appreciate it. It helps me cranking out these good tutorials and these videos. So if you found this valuable, uh, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting me. Keep me making good content. Uh, in addition to that, please consider getting yourself a Go board so you can actually program this code and try it out on real hardware. They're available at nanland.com. And thanks for your support.